Hello, welcome back. We are doing uh, section 2.5 today. We're going to be talking about con continuity, um, which means where is a function continuous and where is it discontinuous or not continuous. And a function um, f is continuous at x equals a if and this is the main thing we're going to be exploring today. If the limit as x is approaching a of f of x is equal to f of a. That's going to be our main way of doing that. And basically, a function is continuous when its graph is a single unbroken curve. So if you see the graph kind of break up at some point, or you have like strange dots above or below, which we're going to run into here, then we have continuous. So we can see that our limit with this function uh, as um, x approaches a from both directions is also f of a. So we can see that at this point, this function is continuous. Three things we need to, uh, to have. Uh, one, f of a is defined, meaning we can find f of a. If that's not defined, then it's not continuous there. The limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. So if this limit goes off to infinity or um, like negative one and positive one at the same time, then again, it's not continuous there. And again, the big one that I just mentioned is that this limit that is, exists is equal to f of a, which is defined. And let's talk about where we are continuous and where we are not for our first example. At which numbers is f discontinuous and why? Well, here's the thing. So f is discontinuous. at x equals, we'll start here at one. And the reason is because f of one is not defined. There's no solid dot anywhere here. Also, we can see at x equals three, we have a problem. And we can see that the limit as x is approaching three, of f of x does not exist. Meaning the limit from the left goes down here to whatever negative y value that is. And the limit from the right goes up here to whatever uh, y value that is. The point is they're not the same y value, therefore it's discontinuous there. They're, they're, the limit doesn't exist. We can also see at x equals five, we have a problem. Now the limit to be clear, as x is approaching five exists. Yay. Also f of five exists. We don't know what the particular y values are in this case, and that's fine. However, we can see that these two are different. And that's the big deal here, that these are not the same. Therefore, it is discontinuous there. So we've done one example of, of each of the three criteria that we needed before. F of A is, is not defined at one. The limit does not exist at X equals three. And the limit does not equal F of, in this case, five for this one. So let's continue on. Example two. So here we have, and let's see what we get here when we plug in um, the limit. All right, let, let's first find f of one, see if that even exists. Uh oh, here we're getting that's three plus two is five, six, six over zero. So it's not defined. So f of one is not defined defined. Therefore, not continuous at x equals 1, in which we're calling a here in this case. 
Okay, so let's try this. Let's find f of two. That's gonna be four times three, which is 12. 12 plus four, 16. So this is gonna be 17 over one, which is 17. Okay, so that exists, that, that's defined. And the limit as x is approaching uh, two of f of x, uh, this is g, pardon me, g of x, g of x right there, is also 17. Because when I plug it in, we don't have any problems. Therefore, it's continuous at x equals two. All right, for a third example, we want to know when um, at a equals um, at a equals one, we it's definitely defined. That's that's no problem. That, that's up here. However, what we want to do, I want to change this at a equals zero. And first off, we can see that h of zero is zero because when x equals zero, we're at zero. So we're good, that's defined, that's great. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the squeeze theorem to find this limit. And I'm gonna do this. I know that the sign is between negative one and one. And if I multiply through by x, and I know that the, the limit as x approaches zero of negative x is zero, and the limit as x approaches zero of positive x, so we did this one here and this one here, is also zero. And we note that this function is always between, we can conclude uh, the limit as x approaches zero of x sine of one over x must be zero by the squeeze theorem. which means we just showed by the squeeze theorem that that's equal to zero. And therefore it is continuous. It is continuous at x equals zero. Cool. Continuity rules. We have a few rules that we're gonna adhere to. First off, if f and g are continuous at a, then the following uh, functions are also continuous. So f plus g is gonna be continuous. f minus g is gonna be continuous. A constant times f is also going to be continuous. We have f times f times g is continuous. F divided by g is also continuous. And f of x to the nth power is also going to be continuous. Polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. So that's your parabolas and your lines and your quad. Uh, quadratics and, and uh, quartics and quinics and all that kind of stuff. Rational functions are continue on all x as long as we are not dividing by zero. Now we're assuming with the q of x that we're saying p of x over q of x, that the q of x must be positive. And not positive, just not zero. So let's use some of these rules. Papers there. 
Example three, determine the uh, intervals of continuity for this. F of X equals X over X squared minus seven X plus 12. I'm gonna go ahead and break that down. To here. And hopefully we can see just looking at it that X cannot be three or four. So in interval notation, this means it's going to be negative infinity to infinity of everything except for three and four. All right, and here we have a piecewise function. The limit of f of x as x approaches zero. Zero is less than two. And I can see when I put in zero squared minus three, I'm gonna get negative three. F of zero means evaluate that at zero, once again, we're gonna get negative three. So it is continuous. This function f of x is continuous at zero because we just showed that the limit and f of zero uh, both go to the same piece there. All right, so now we are approaching two from the left side, meaning numbers that are smaller than two. So as we're approaching two from this side, we're only looking at this top part. So this is our piecewise function here. So we're looking at this one because it's less than two. So two squared is four, four minus three is one. However, two from the positive side, now we're down here. Now we have two plus two, which is four. And the limit as x approaches two of f of x, notice that they're different. The limit from one direction to the other are different. So this does not exist. F of two does exist. Notice when x equals two, we can define that. Two plus two is gonna be four. The domain in this case is gonna be all real numbers. Now notice when I plug in two there, I get four minus three, that's one. Yeah. And what's gonna happen is the domain should be negative infinity to infinity because it is defined at two. So everywhere on this function is defined. However, it's not continuous at two because the limit does not exist, right? It, the left side and the right side go to two different values. So this is gonna be all values except two. All right, last part. So when we have a radical, or in this case, we're using the exponential uh, and we're looking at the denominator there. When the denominator is odd, then the function is continuous all points. That F is continuous. Now, if it's even, so if this was like cube root, it wouldn't matter if it's negative or positive under the radical, it doesn't matter. However, if it's square root or fourth root or sixth root, where M is even, then we have a problem. More restrictions, I should say, is continuous. At all points. That F is continuous. And f of x needs to be positive or equal to zero. And we know this again, square root under the radical has to be positive um, or zero, but both work. So let's take a look at this real quick. You'll notice here we have an even root. So we have to make sure that that's positive. 
and we can see our critical values are at x equals negative three and three. And we can see when we test it. So a big negative number is going to make that positive. It's going to make that negative. So it's going to be negative. Let's take zero. Notice we're going to get a positive times a positive. And a large positive number is going to make that part negative. So we're here, which means G is continuous. From negative three to three. And notice I'm including the brackets, which means I'm including the endpoints because we can take the fourth root of zero. That's no problem. For number two, notice we have an odd denominator here in the exponent. This means F is continuous everywhere with no restrictions in this case. I hope you found that helpful.